Hi, Gaon. So today I thought I'd introduce the other cases that Pamanyunga languages share, uh, apart from the accusative case used with pronouns. And I think I'll start from the bottom here with gu. Uh, gu is used as a dative marker in Pamanyunga languages all over Australia. Uh, now these are the Ngara case suffixes and as you can see there are two uh, dative suffixes in Ngara gu which attaches to nouns that end in a consonant and ra that attaches to nouns that end in a vowel. Uh, now ne there is no risk for confusion between dative gu uh, and ergative gu and I will get back to that. So these here then are the ergative and the locative allomorphs in Ngara. Uh, ergative and locative allomorphs are related in Pamanyonga languages as you can see with the ergative allomorphs ending in U and the locative ones in A. Uh, now it may vary between languages exactly what allomorphs uh, they have and how many uh, they make use of. But lu is very widespread uh, as an ergative suffix, uh, as is the corresponding locative la. Now as you can see we don't get la in ngara, instead we have ngora. Uh, in Ngara, as it so happens, la marks locative only with dual and plural pronouns. Uh, there are two languages uh, in the northern part of the Pilbara region of Western Australia that don't use la uh, with common nouns, but instead have ngora. Uh, and why that is, is lost in the mists of time because we don't know uh, for certain what happened in these languages before the 1860s, which is when they started to be recorded uh, for the first time. So uh, looking at this, these allomorphs, uh, I think we'll start from the bottom with the marginal ones. We have du, da, which attach to nouns that end in an apico-alveolar consonant and du ja, uh, attaching to nouns that end in a palatal consonant. Why are these marginal? Well, they are marginal because only about 10% of all nouns in the language uh, end in a consonant. So these suffixes here are the frequently used ones. Uh, they are used with nouns that end in one of the three short vowels, i, a, or u. Uh, in Ngara, lu and ngora attach to long nouns, nouns that consist of three or more syllables. Uh, these ones are both used for disyllabic nouns. A noun must consist of at least two syllables. Uh, now ngu and nga are fre frequently used. This here is what is called a homorganic nasal stop cluster, which is a fancy term that means that there is a nasal and a stop following each other in this way and that have the same place of articulation in the mouth. Uh, now, these suffixes are used with the, uh, the homorganic nasal stop cluster unless there is such a cluster in the second syllable of the noun itself. If that is the case, gu and ka uh, are used instead. So you see that there is no risk for confusion between dative gu, which attaches to nouns that end in a consonant sound, 
and ergative ku, which attaches to nouns, uh, disyllabic nouns that end in a vowel. Uh, I have also written inster there, uh, which stands for instrumental case. So that is to say that these suffixes also mark instruments. Uh, there has been a long debate among linguists about whether this means that there are two cases, the ergative case and the instrumental case, and they happen to be marked by one and the same set of suffixes, uh, or whether there is one set of suffixes that happen to be uh, used to mark two different functions the ergative function and the instrumental one. Uh, I prefer not to get into that debate if I can stay out of it. Uh, suffice for me to say that these suffixes uh, sometimes mark ergative and sometimes instrumental and it is usually clear uh, from the context which is which. So now there are three examples on the board and I hope you are on board with going through the examples on the board. Anyway, uh, first we have wari ngajanyina kundura muargo. Wari, the verb to give in the present tense. Ngaja, I. First person singular ergative. Nina. Second person singular uh, accusative. So I give you. Uh, the verb give tends to be detransitive, which means that there is something that is given. So what is this something? Uh, here this something is kundurra muargo. Kundu means good and muar means word. So literally I give you a good word which according to my consultant in the context should be interpreted to mean I give you a good recommendation. Kundu ends with a vowel and hence takes the ra dative suffix while muar takes the gu dative suffix. One thing that we can learn from this is that all constituents of the Ngara noun phrase takes a suitable case marking. Uh, here we have an example of the ergative allomorph gu. So wanja gu nina kandinin. Wanja is a word for dog. Yogoro is another one. Uh, and as it so happens, wanja is the syllabic, and we have the homorganic nasal stop cluster in the second syllable. A homorganic nasal stop cluster that in this case is nj, nj. And so the gu uh, ergative allomorph is used. The dog you will bite in the future tense. The dog will bite you. And at the bottom we have a couple of examples of the use of the lu ergative allomorph. So palagani uh, is a demonstrative mid-distant and marungu means man. Palagani lu marungu lu that man. Purupiri. This is a Ngara complex verb. Most verbs of the Ngara language are in fact complex verbs. They consist of two parts and for the most part, uh, so to speak, both of these parts receive main stress. Which is to say that while they constitute one grammatical word together, uh, they are two phonological words. 
and that's why I write them apart like this. Uh, this it happens also to be a complex verb but here we don't have two parts that receive main stress and there is only main stress at the beginning so that's why I write this together like this. So anyway, Borupiri is scaling. Yoda, fish. That man is scaling fish. Uh, I will have reason to get back to the Nara complex verbs at length, I think. Uh, and one thing I'm sure people start to wonder about when looking at these examples is word order. What is the preferred and basic word order in Nara? And that is also something I will have reason to get back to. And that will be Lyra.